Professor, thank you so much Hi. for joining us. There is so much going on because the Delta variant is now extremely present in the UK and other parts of the world. How much of a concern is this? It doesn't seem more deadly. It seems that the vaccines actually work against it. And yet we're hearing about, you know, waves of people going to hospital. I think the problem is that this variant is really contagious, much more contagious than previous variants. Uh, it's very easy to get. And, and you can't really stop the spread of a variant unless you've got a wall of vaccination. And I'm afraid no country, even the UK, which has such a great record, has that wall that can prevent these variants from taking over. So what it is at the moment is a race between vaccination and the spread of the variants. Um, Jennifer, how concerned are you about some of the emerging markets actually not having enough vaccination? So here in Europe, we seem to be doing OK, the U.S. as well. But if we don't vaccinate the whole world as fast as possible, could it lead to much worse variants to which the vaccinations actually don't Abs work? Absolutely. That's exactly you've hit it right on the head. So. As long as you don't have that wall of vaccination worldwide, you'll, there will be a breeding ground for new variants. So all, you know, all the ones that the vaccine works against will get eliminated, but then they will be outcompeted by new variants, which are always coming up. And then these new variants threaten our security because they may not, uh, they may be able to get through our vaccine strategies. So as long as the entire world is not safe, nobody is safe because borders are porous. People get through variant spread. We've seen that over and over over the past year. So until everyone is vaccinated we can't sit back and say oh i'm okay i've had two jobs it, it doesn't work like that do we still need to wear a mask when we're vaccinated so the, the u.s the way the u.s is going about you know how, how to deal with people that are, are double vaxxed compared to some european countries is very different well, there, there, there's not a lot of data on whether vaccination prevents transmission. So we know in some cases that it does, but I think we don't have enough evidence. And I think, you know, I think it's a good bet if you've been doubly vaccinated and it's been, you know, a, a, a month since your last vaccine, you're probably unlikely to spread uh, so to spread virus as much. But it's, it's not completely ruled out. So. And, of course, most people aren't fully vaccinated. So I think masks may be with us for some time, although I do understand that the public's appetite for them is waning. Yeah, Jennifer, I mean, the other question that comes up, you know, very often is, first of all, should we vaccinate children, you know, from 12 to 18 or even under 12? Would that make a huge difference, given how many, you know, kids are at home now because of the spread through schools, certainly here in the U.K.? Yeah, my son is home right now because there was an outbreak in his school. So I think kids are where the viruses are spreading now. So the, the Delta variant is sweeping through the UK, for example. M many, many of this is happening in schools. And again, if you're getting infected in school, even though it's maybe not going to harm you, you're not going to go to hospital, you're not going to die, you're still a breeding ground for variants. So a, a child who's infected can create new variants, and these can then spread to other people. So I think vaccinating children would be an excellent idea. I do understand that some people feel hesitant about that, but there is no reason to be to be hesitant. The vaccines have been shown to be very safe, and I would encourage, uh, you know, the idea of getting everybody vaccinated eventually. Is there an, an ideal vaccination mix? So it seems that some of the highest efficacy um, you know, rates also come if you do, for example, uh, AstraZeneca together with an mRNA. Is it something that's proven or are there still clinical trials on this? I think we're still trying to work that out. I mean, even Public Health England just had a great study that showed that, you know, Pfizer alone or Oxford alone uh, was up more than 90 percent effective at preventing hospitalization against the Delta variant. So even, you know, just the, the single the single type vaccines are working really, really well, much better than we, we had hoped. The mixing and matching, I think the data are still um, out. Jennifer, the, the, the you know, million dollar question is, the, is, do we just need to learn how to live with this? So I know it's easier in developed countries where, of course, we have critical mass vaccination. But is it something that we'll have with us for the next two to three years, if not longer? I, I think we'll have it with us forever. I think this is going to be like influenza. But the good news is that eventually we can get on top of it as long as people have a baseline of vaccination. As the new variants come online, uh, we're already having clinical trials. For example, Oxford has tweaked the vaccine to, to work against the beta variant, and this is now in clinical trials. So as long as we can respond as new variants arise and we can tweak our vaccines and get boosters every winter, just like we do for influenza, 
I think we will live with it uh, for the foreseeable future, but we can also keep it under control.